most of them in life are looking for how do I make a life with living with term with having. There are people in our communities that don't want to make a living. They literally will just sit down and receive what other people will give them. They might make a marvelous sign, they might make a simple sign, but the very fact that they're there day in and day out creates an implied relationship to the people that regularly shop at a place. The people that regularly shop at a place will see them on a regular basis and eventually they may talk to them. It's sort of a long haul, but it does actually work. One of the men who is sitting in a wheelchair because of an alleged medical problem and sits outside one of the shops that I sometimes ply by or go shopping in used to not say a word to people. I encouraged him to be a little bit more social. I believe he has benefited from that over the course of a year, to just be a little bit friendly and not worry if someone doesn't give him today, because they might give him another time because he was kind and thoughtful. I believe he did that. I also know that other panhandlers on the campus street of Green that sit at roughly 6th Street near most of the food shops always have benefited from what I have been promoting in the community. They started to act like they came up with those ideas themselves, and that was a lie. I believe they learned about it through a program or through getting into my bags when I was asleep. I'm pretty sure that one of them is calling himself a priest and started getting interested in really bad pastors that came uh, to us long ago on TV, and most of which are dead or in prison for something. Tax evasion, female abuse, who knows. But the reality is it doesn't matter to me right now because I am not liable for them. They may be liable to their behavior to God and what they've done to me by stealing from me my work, my intellectual property, and benefiting from it from fraud. But when I talk about this, people will say, well, maybe he's jealous. No, I'm the man who came up with the program. I'm the man who had it privately held in his bags and never once provided it to them. I'm also the man who's had thumb drives taken out of his pockets and things stolen off it probably by one of two reasons. Either the person just didn't want me to have my work anymore and they started abusing my computer and literally changing wording on documents that I wrote and no, I didn't say those things. I'm pretty specific in the language that I utilize. That would be one thing. The other thing is someone who tried to take copies but did a cut and paste instead of a copy. So any player in the community on the campus or out here at the mall that has copies of my paperwork is a liar. I never once presented it to any of them. I provide my program documents in front of an organizational leader, an executive, but I only do that after a considerable time of evaluating whether or not they are the right person for my life to deal with. There are plenty of pastors that like to play in and out of the police department. There are plenty of police officers, even sheriff, in the jails that have their own sheriff's license, but also a alleged ministry license or some sort of a jail pastor's license. That really doesn't play well for people. What it means is that they don't have the confidentiality that they deserve. We also have plenty of people in the jails that play in and play out and are not there on a regular basis. They are volunteer pastors, so there's no chance at most people to get saved, if you will. And most people who are in the coming from Christendom kind of know what that means. Evangelicals certainly do. What I also know about people from experiencing this level of lifestyle unexpectedly is that most American citizens, whether they're black, white, Hispanic, or otherwise, do not give to people in the streets. They generally don't. Some people make what are called regulars, meaning they make a regular relationship with them because they are either of the same community or they have somehow at some point in their life been in a similar situation. And then they start to build a brotherhood or a sister brotherhood of some kind and they regularly just give because they can and they will. They like the person's personality, they don't mind them being there, and they really don't want them to starve. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth, and while every person who builds a small business practice or a microcosm of, microcosm of society implication have the right to be there, we also have risks. 
police officers can piss all over people to demand their information and they do it when anyone new comes to town. The problem that they're missing is it's rarely the panhandler that's a real problem. It's only groups of networking panhandlers that become problems. They're the ones that pull the shit on other people. They're the ones who bring their brothers-in-laws or their brothers or their best pals to come in and threaten people as if for some reason a human being who sees them doesn't have the right to decide who they're going to plant any extra discretionary income with. The revenge factor is foolishness. It's immaturity. It's childishness. The childhood network has to stop. People have rights to sit places. I try to provide people not only the six feet COVID distance, but I try to provide myself a seating on the edge of a property. I do not try to sit at the front door of anything. Occasionally I put my pack there because I'm going in to do shopping and I want my pack on the security cameras. So if something goes missing, I can get them to help me to find it. It's basically my house. And I don't bring my house in every place because it's not logical. It's also difficult to do that when you're carrying extra things for your family to come. I am very upset that someone stole my black sleeping bag. I had two of them, and I purposely had two of them, one for me and one for my upcoming spouse. But I get upset when people do things like that to me. I also get upset when little liars like to play in and out of my property and ruin things. Who the hell are they? Are they three years old that they don't know how to handle things? But more importantly, what gives them the right to violate my privacy? To put their hands in my bags? To rip my clothing? To cut my things? Who the fuck do they think they are? Am I doing that to them? Am I invading their home? Am I invading their shelter? Because these folks who come out here, they're not carrying blankets. They're not carrying sleeping bags. They might carry something comfortable to sit on, and I applaud them for that. For a long time there, I couldn't get one player who sort of got a leg problem to sit on something more comfortable. I gave him several cushions several times said, you're going to kill your fucking ass. Stop doing that. But he wouldn't keep it. Every day, he'd just leave it where the fuck he left it. So I stopped giving to them. The reality in life is I show regard as best I can to everyone. But I don't like to be played with. And I definitely hate when religious women think that they're going to win something by playing with me. At no time have I asked you into my life. At no time have I said that your financial contribution to my ministry gives you any right to my property as far as with you, to me as far as my legal name or anything else, or to my faith practices at all. And most certainly, under no fucking circumstances, do you have the right to take me out of my clothes after drugging my food and do things to me. These things have happened and occurred to me. And I'm incredibly angry about what happened to me in a different state. I promise you, if there was ever a way for God to retaliate, COVID is it. COVID is God's retaliation on the humanity that has failed to regard God, human dignity, and privacy of everything, including the privacy of people's bodies today.